I want to talk about resultant pressure force on a submerged plate. And in this derivation, it's in the textbook, uh, and you'll see it in your fluid mechanics class, either a civil engineer or, or a mechanical engineer. It's in those textbooks. It's very basic. And you'll see the use of that first area moment as well as that second area moment. What was the first area moment? Integral y dA as well as the integral of y squared dA. They come out of this derivation. To, so here's the setup of the problem. We have some fluid that's at rest. It's in a container. We're just interested in the pressure force that it exerts on a slanted um, uh, submerged plate that's submerged here. And maybe we're interested in only this section of the plate. So that's going to be our derivation. What we're going to find is you're going to be able to say, I know that there's hydrostatic pressure exerted all over this plate, but we can replace it by a single resultant force, F of R, and we'll get the equation for that. And actually, that equation will use that first area moment, as well as the proper location. Maybe you have a coordinate system starting at the origin here, and this is Y coming down. The location where that pressure point should be that center of pressure for that plate and in that equation you get y the, the second area moment integral y squared dA all right let's do the derivation so we have hydrostatic fluid we have a plate and we have some section on the plate this plate is along a, a straight line we're not going to have a curved surface it's just a straight flat plate, and this is at an angle theta. First of all, how many people remember the equation for the pressure of a fluid that's just sitting there, hydrostatic pressure? It's something rho, the density of the fluid, times something, times something. Rho what? Rho GH. Yeah, rho GH. And so at the beginning of the corner, the top part of this plate that I'm very interested in is, uh, can you tell me what that height is? of the, that the fluid is, you know, that top surface of the plate below the fluid surface, where we have atmospheric pressure or zero pressure, zero fluid pressure, that's what we'll say is at, at that. This is our, maybe I should have color-coded blue, right? This is our fluid level in our tank. What is H? Well, we're going to have a coordinate system where this is zero, the origin, and Y is measured downward. And so wherever H is always the sine of theta times Y. Think of Y as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Was pressure a force per unit area? Yeah, that's what it was. It's, it's the magnitude of the force per unit area. That's what pressure is. Okay. Um, can you tell that if this is the plate, that the height here at the end of the plate, this coordinate system continues on, is higher, that it's deeper in the fluid, hence the pressure is higher, isn't it? If the pressure is higher there. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could sketch the pressure distribution because the pressure is always perpendicular to the surface in the fluid. And what we have is a, think of it as a metal plate there a gate of some sort that the force of the pressure is at. Well, it's not going to be uniform like that, is it? Because the pressure is higher as I go down. It's going to be shaped like this. So it's, it's like a rectangle with a triangle on top. It's, it's a trapezoid or something for the pressure distribution. Now, what's interesting is, is a lot of people are interested in gates that are rectangle. Here I'm trying to turn it and look at a projection of, the, of that area of the gate. Here, it, the gate's just a line, but I'm turning it and looking at it. But you could make life very challenging, and you could have a gate that looks like this. Oh, it, it still has the same you know, beginning and ending location, but has a much different area. Or I could have a gate that looks like you, uh, just change it around, make it very dramatic, like that. 
kind of a funny gate, right? But all gates don't have to be rectangular. It could even be oval, but these are kind of extremes. This one would be very, very common, right? And the others would be kind of extremes. All right, so what we want to do is we want to replace that pressure distribution with a single resultant force and know where to compute it, where to place it on our plate. And I, could, I can kind of give you a little bit. It'll be just a little south of the centroid of that plate. This plate, it'll have a centroid up here. It'll be a little south of it, but it'll be a lot higher than of this rectangular plate, won't it? And likewise, here you have the centroid. It'll be uh, a little south of the centroid. So, so, uh, but it this would have a, the extreme uh, distance down, l largest y for where the center of pressure is for the application of that resultant pressure force. All that makes sense? Good. Let's press forward into this derivation. So we want to calculate, first of all, F of R. Well, does this, this make sense? You sum up all the little DFs over the area, but the force is per unit area, so we'll sum it up over all the areas, and this is the integral of PDA. Why don't we just start there? I don't know. Maybe it helps to think about summing up little forces. How do you get the forces? A little chunk of area times the pressure at that area. But the pressure changes as I move around there. Well, let's plug in our equation for the pressure. That was rho g sine of theta times y and our area dA. And we integrate over our area. That gives us the resultant force. That area could look like this, area could look like this, area could look like that. It's very general. Well, what's not changing that can come outside the integral is density of the fluid. We're not going to handle changing density of the fluid. Gravity, we're not changing that. And we're not changing the slope. So all those come outside the integral. Y dA. What is this? Integral Y dA is? our first moment for our area. And so you see, oh, this math, that's our first moment. It's a little complicated, but there you go. If I rewrote this equation and I said uh, rho g sine of theta, and I multiplied by area, and I divided by area, I'd have the integral of y dA. Why did we just do that? What is this term equal to? Nothing to do with hydrostatics. What does that really tell us? What does this equation give us? The centroid of the area. It's the centroid of the area. All right. That makes sense? And now let's put the A on here. This one, we're just going to move this one right here. It will make it easier to read this equation. And we'll pick up the rho g sine of theta. All these equal signs. So somebody says, hmm, this is the y location of the centroid of the area. We just talked about the y location. If it was this way, it would be right here. If it was that shape, it would be right here. And if it was that shape, it would be right there. But it depends on the area where what y c c is. But once I would determine y sub c, what is the sine of h times y sub c? What is that product? That would be the depth to the y sub c, to the, the centroid of my area. And now I put rho g times some average depth. That's my average pressure, the pressure evaluated at the centroid of the area. So the pressure at the centroid of the area, or the average pressure, times the area. And so you get a nice, easy-to-read equation. It says, oh, if I want the, the resultant force, it's the pressure at the centroid of the area times the magnitude of the area. And there we use that first moment. But now somebody says, where do I apply that resultant force? I know it's magnitude now. Do I pull it, put it at y sub c? No. It's going to be a little bit below because the pressure is higher as you're going down. OK. Well, you do a moment, a, a balance. That's what we've been studying in statics. And so f of r times some appropriate location, 
it's not going to be y sub c, we'll call it y sub p, the center of pressure. Where do I apply it? And typically, it's right like this, y sub p, a little below, is equal to the integral of y times df, or you say df is the pressure dA. So this is for the, this is our resultant system. This is for the distributed system. Okay. So what we have is what is pressure? Rho G sine of theta times Y times Y times dA. That one Y goes right there, the integral. Guess what? Rho comes out, G comes out, sine of theta comes out. We're integral of Y squared dA. And what exactly is that? Our second moment for that area. Okay? And so you say, good, this is, this is really good. Uh, we could replace what, what is, if this is my point right here, O, origin, right? I can replace the uh, I sub O, sometimes I write it like that, or since this is the y-axis going down, maybe they'll write it as I sub x going through the origin where y is equal to zero. Isn't that um, equal to I sub x is equal to the integral of y squared dA? Do you agree? Okay. So you could replace it right there. Uh, so uh, y sub p, the center of pressure, where you should put it, would be 1 over that resultant force times rho g sine of theta, i sub o or i sub x, whichever syntax you want. But it's, it's this going through this point right there, perpendicular to the page. That's the axis. All right. Well, we can simplify this a little bit more. Uh, you can put in what is f of r. We just did it. It's rho g sine of theta y sub c. So you'll pick up, maybe I should have done that, rho g sine of theta um, i sub naught divided by rho g sine of theta y sub c a. So a lot cancels, don't it? doesn't it? y sub p. But you can work with this equation a little bit more using the parallel axis theorem. What is our parallel axis theorem? It's, it says that the I sub O, right there, is equal to I um, of O through the centroid of that area plus that distance squared times the area. What is our distance squared? Isn't that Y sub C squared area? It's going to make the equation a little more readable. So what we do is we substitute. So we sign y sub p is equal to, let's go ahead and put it in there, i bar naught plus y sub c squared area divided by y sub c area. And so the first term comes in at y sub c. You know what? A lot of people wouldn't be wrong if they said, I don't know much about the center of pressure, but I'm going to assume the center of pressure is close to the centroid of that area. They would be pretty close. And did you see all the time I've been showing these two dots, these two dots, these two dots? That's the difference between the location of the centroid of the area and the center of pressure. But let's continue this equation. So this term right here gave us the y sub c. The next term is I not bar, that's a centroidal moment of inertia for that area, divided by the y sub c a. And there is equation out of fluid mechanics. It adds a little bit, doesn't it? Doesn't it make, let me ask this question, I'll scroll down a little bit. Can this term ever be negative? Does it make sense to ever be negative? Area is positive, y sub c is positive, it's submerged, and 
moment of inertia? No. Centroidal moment, that's always positive. That's why Y sub P is always a little bit less than Y sub C. Or, I'm sorry, a little further down, a little lower. So that's how you get the location, the correct location of the center of pressure. Well, with that, I thank you for your attention. We're going to call it quits for today.